Hello again, Christy and Alonzo and Matt. It's time to talk about new home movie recommendations. That could be DVDs, that could be streaming. The best thing that is new out on DVD this week, we talked about last week, and that is <laughs> Black Panther. But if you are looking for something that might be an alternative at home to the many, many enormous summer blockbusters which are in theaters and are on their way, we've got a few for you, starting with Alonzo's pick. Uh, Yippee 4K, Mr. Falcon. Uh, <laughs> it's the 30th anniversary of Die Hard, and uh, there is a new 4K release from uh, 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment. If you have the schmancy 4K setup at home, which not a lot of people do, but if you do, you know who you are, and you want to have this movie because it is still one of the great uh, American action movies of all time. The extras, if you already bought the Blu-ray, you've seen them. But, uh, you know, this is one of those things where every time your home theater format goes up a notch, you have to rebuy all the movies to, uh, to to match it. And so I'm glad they're they're giving the treatment to Die Hard. It deserves it. And, yeah, it's summer of 1988. I still remember wow. that yeah. very <laughs> vividly. Uh, but, yeah, so that's my pick. For what does the 4K setup require? Uh, I believe it's both the player and the screen, and okay. it's 4K is like what you get in movie theaters, right. basically. So you basically have your own, you know, it's as though you had a DCP at home, but you're watching it on disc. Um, um, so I had the pleasure of hosting a screening of Die Hard a few months ago with the wonderful Amy Nicholson and the wonderful Larry Mantle, one of our little KPCC screenings, at the Ace Hotel, the theater at the Ace Hotel, a beautiful old historic theater, and it was packed, mm -hmm. and everyone knew when the big lines were coming, and it's still, you know, endlessly quotable, and, and it holds up, and so it's a, an excellent choice. And very, it's a very well-written movie. It's it like is. The, people don't give it enough credit for the fact that the heist makes sense, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the characters are interesting, and it's, yeah, yeah there's a lot Alan of Alan Rickman. What, uh, at one point, the Rotten Tomatoes offices were in that 20th Century Fox tower. Oh, not a <laughs> Right, and so, uh, you know, the lobby, like, that's the lobby from the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and you go in the elevators, and they've still got those kind of X rivets in the walls, and it just was, was it always, always kind of yeah. made me smile walking through there like, you know, Christmas time, <laughs> things yeah. are gonna go sideways. Die Hard makes sense geographically. They come yeah. up the right street in Century yeah. City. I, I always appreciate that, as you know. Um, Matt, what's your pick this week? Uh, my pick, uh, this is streaming this month on uh, Netflix, uh, a 2008 film starring James McAvoy and Angelina Jolie, Wanted, uh, directed by uh, Timur Bekmenbetov. Uh, it's based on the graphic novel or comic book Wanted by Mark Miller and J.G. Jones. Uh, the Mark Miller comic book uh, goes in somewhat of a different direction. This is a, a very loose adaptation. Uh, look, this is not the most intelligently written movie, but there's some <laughs> great over-the-top scenes in it, uh, great car chase early on, uh, the idea that you can curve bullets around uh, targets. I, this is over-the-top goofball action, uh, great score by Danny Elfman, uh, early Chris Pratt role where yep. he's kind of the, <laughs> the you know, I, obnoxious friend um, that turns out to be uh, hooking up with uh, James McAvoy's girlfriend. Um, I like this movie a lot. Again, like it's really dumb, and when you start to get into the <laughs> plot of why this Brotherhood of Assassins does what they do, it becomes this standard joke that my wife and I have, like, why are they doing this? Weavers. Yeah, <laughs> I, like it's just, it doesn't make any sense, but it kind of doesn't matter because it's over-the-top fun. Uh, I. Again, I like this one. Am I wrong in thinking this is the only movie where Morgan Freeman drops an F-bomb? No. Mm. I mean, he does be. say it. He does yes. it in this movie. And I, was like, <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Was, I don't no. think it's the only one, but he does it pretty well in this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's dumb, but like there's a consistency and a cohesiveness to its style. Yeah. Right? So I, I really appreciate that. Angelina Jolie is, you know, exactly what you want her to be yeah. in a role like this. And I loved the, they take the kind of cool action imagery that we saw like in the matrix and they just up it even more yeah. and uh, and it's it's fun it's dumb fun well made dumb fun yeah i, I always I appreciate like this that a lot. it's a very good choice. so that's streaming now it's streaming right. where is it streaming do we know uh, netflix netflix all right so i've got one for you on netflix also and that is moonrise kingdom one of my favorite favorite wes anderson movies and we talked about it when it came out 6 years ago like right about now, six years ago is when it came out, and uh, it's a very Wes Anderson-y, Wes Anderson film, so if you love his work, you probably have already seen this and you love it, and if you are not a fan or if you're not familiar with him, this may not necessarily convert you, um, but it is 
charming and just achingly romantic and impeccably crafted as all his films tend to be with a really, really great cast. It's about these two kids who are 12 years old and they are full of that pre-adolescent angst and they fall in love with each other. But as is often the case with kids in a Wes Anderson film, they are like wise beyond their years, you know, and, and cultured. And uh, they have like adult frustrations beyond their years, even though they still have the hormonal inclinations of, of somebody their age. And they run off together. They live in this tiny little island off the coast of New England in the 60s. And they run off together on the island and everyone has to go and find them, including the scoutmaster played by Edward Norton, and what the police chief is, Bruce Willis, and he is married to Frances McDormand, right? Yeah, it's all rings a bell. Anyway, it's an amazing cast. Tilda Swinton's in it, and it's it's everything you expect in the best of Wes Anderson. It is his style. It's like the perfect symmetry, and like you know the the stylistic pushes in on characters, and the the perfect fonts on the notes they write to each other, and everything is just so. It's like a Godard movie if Anna Karina and Jean Paul Belmondo were twelve. <laughs> if they were twelve, right? And that's not such a bad thing. And uh, but. It's twee, I guess, whatever. But it's, oh, it's hella twee. It is, but well, that's not necessarily a bad. I'm not but sure you can say hella twee. I would say <laughs> that the, the the emotions tend to shine through in this more than they do in something that is also hella twee, like Darjeeling Limited, or like for instance, Life Aquatic. You know, I think there was a stretch there after Rushmore where it was all about the obsessive minutia and at the expense of character development or sure. legitimate, you know, heart. And this is a, a nice return to that balance of the perfection and the details and the, you know, the craft, but also something that engages you from an emotional perspective. So, yeah. Moonrise no, Kingdom, okay. it's a good one. It not, splits the difference well. Yeah, it's not necessarily my favorite of his, but it's a really, really good one. Do you want to also mention even Hellboy is also out Oh this yeah, week. Hellboy 2. Uh, that which, was a good one. Yeah, Hellboy 2, because you get to see uh, the singing sequence between Hellboy and Abe Sapien, they're singing Barry Manilow. Um, super fun in that movie. Yeah, I like that one a lot too. That's a lot of fun. Do you um, do you think one needs to have seen Hellboy in order to appreciate Hellboy too? I don't know that you need to. I would recommend having seen it <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen that one. Hellboy two does feel a little bit more like in like it's in Del Toro's wheelhouse mm-hmm. with kind of that that magic realism that that he or I mean maybe not realism but he that it's got a vibe more like Del Toro does, where the first one doesn't. The first one feels more true to the Mignola mm-hmm. original material, but the second one feels a little bit more fantastical. Yeah, and Ron Perlman is, of course, always great. Yes. No matter what he does. Um, any Really quickly, any TV that you're watching that folks should watch? We have like a minute to talk about so TV. So much TV. <laughs> so much TV. Pick, pick one TV show Westworld. that you're in love with right now. Westworld. Billions. I got caught up with last night, as you'll see why later on today. Uh, and that they are nailing it this season. Okay. Anything yeah, else? I'm enjoying Westworld because there's six or seven different plot lines going on, and I have no idea how they work together, and I'm I no idea where it's going, and I'm enjoying that. Okay. I still have not seen either of these shows. Do you watch anything? <laughs> what do we watch? You know what? We watch Maddo, and we watch Lawrence O'Donnell, and we watch 11th Hour. We watch all of our MSNBC shows. Right. And do I watch anything? You know, Nick commandeers the TV, so um. Um, a lot of a Magic School Bus. The <laughs> rebooted Voltron? Kate McKinnon voice. No, I don't think he watches that. Oh, Voltron. the new Voltron's pretty solid. Ooh, good to know. Yeah. yeah, so Kate McKinnon has taken over for Lily Tomlin as yeah. the voice of... Cool. It's not Miss Frizzle. It's like Miss Frizzle's niece or something anyway.